Good morning. Good morning. Hey. Are you all ready to receive? Yes. We've been working pretty hard this month, haven't we? We started off, first we're working on creating it, co-creating. Have you noticed a difference from when you're creating in your energy versus in God's energy, co-creating? Okay, so uh, Bet started us off this month by talking about the importance of our thoughts. Our thoughts are creating our blueprint for our creations. And we were to watch those thoughts, and when they strayed, got off track, we were to get back in that oneness, that find that we were perfect. We we're that perfect child of God and see ourselves perfect and start again. Have we been doing that? And then Charmaine talked about our emotions and how our emotions, we learn our emotions, and that they help shape our experiences. And we were to shift from I am my emotion to I am feeling an emotion. So I thought it was so awesome. How many of us say I am stressed? And now we are creating that because we're calling it forth. And so now we're saying, I'm feeling stressed in the moment and it allows that energy to move and change and not color our experience as being that totality. Um, and then David last week talked about focus equals form. And so we were to be monitoring our thoughts and, and emotions and our form is not necessarily uh, something in the physical, but the form is the shape of our reality we want to create. So remember David's form for his reality was to be happy. And so now he's monitoring his thoughts and emotions to be happy, to sustain that form that he wants to create for his life. Have you all decided what form you might want for your life this time? Okay, so we've been doing that and working very hard, right? So now it's time to receive. So who thinks they are really able to totally receive all the good the universe has for them at any moment? Three, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> there was some hesitation and not... Not everybody raised their hands. <laughs> All right, so how good of a receivers are we? What if we look at um, how well do you receive compliments? Cindy, you look beautiful. That's not what she said earlier. I, I've done my makeup. I have my makeup on. You look like you've lost weight. Black, it's the slimming thing. <laughs> it's a black slimming thing. Um, love those shoes. Ah, TJ Maxx, 10 bucks. <laughs> Don't we do that? When people say, give a compliment, we have to feel we have to disclose a uh, how much around we received or the situation in which allowed us to receive something as simple as that. And maybe it's just women. No. Yes, yeah. I think, I, I think guys receive pretty well, actually. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. And we love a good deal. We love a good deal. Why is that? Why is that? When we, we can even afford things at full price. Yes. And has, any, has anybody ever tried to give you something? You went, no, 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 I don't need that. No. It's okay. No, you don't have to do that for me. I got it. I got it. <laughs> we like push back on all the simple things and all the simple things. And so if we're always looking for that deal, that discount, we are discounting our own receptivity. If you, if, when I looked up discounting, it's regarded as being unworthy of consideration because it lacks credibility. Oh. <sighs> 
<laughs> now, I'm not saying you have to pay full price for everything and not to look at the deal, but the energy around receiving has to, we have to make it filter where we are worthy to receive it. And have we all wanted something and then if we didn't, well, we didn't want it anyways? And if we're trying to manifest our creations, are our words always matching our desires? Do we discount when people tell us things? Do we discount what we really want instead of staying focused on being able to receive that? And so why is it so hard just to say thank you? I love it, too. It brings me much joy. Why can't we just rejoice in our receptivity of even the little things? <clears throat> and so why do we think it's a bigger blessing and we can receive a gift from the universe better than just calling it forth, you know? Why do we feel like the deal from the universe is greater than me just saying, I want this and go get it, or holding my energy? And not to say it doesn't come that way also, because the universe is always bringing us that. But why is maybe being in our own power not as easy? Maybe it's because... Uh, it's a validation from the universe that we've grown to receive what we wanted. Because everything that we own, we own in consciousness. So, and even if we've had something in the past, we own it in consciousness. So it's part of us. And when we desire something new, that means we have to grow to reach it, grow to receive it. Let me not say grow towards it, maybe grow this way, bigger to receive it. And maybe it becomes as a surprise. Maybe the surprise from the universe is easier to handle than expecting. Expecting. <clears throat> I know that um, our receptive energy is our feminine energy. And what I've witnessed is the feminine energy is very busy nowadays, very busy. I know that when mostly, not totally, but most women, if they get a massage, they have everything to do afterwards. I'll say, are you going to go home and rest now? i got to go to the grocery store. i got to do this. It's my only day off, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, going to do this. Guys, not so much. Guys, not so much. That feminine energy is very busy, and that's our receptive side. And if we can't receive the small things, how are we going to receive our big things? Well, there's a lot of energy around the word receive. I thought, well, let me look up receive. To me, receive is flow and open and just giving and just doesn't receive to you. Does it feel like this coming? And Well, when I looked it up in Webster, it says, to get by having something given, told, or imposed, and may or may not imply the consent of the recipient. Hmm? Hmm. To encounter experience. To have inflicted on one, undergo, to suffer as to receive a blow. Oh. To take the effect or force of, for example, bear all to bear, all four wheels bear the weight. Receive? <laughs> well, no wonder. This is, it's in the dictionary. It's in written word. And maybe that's been vibrating through our consciousness is, remember, remember we grew up hearing, well, yeah, you're going to get it. <laughs> you better watch what you ask for. You might be sorry. You're going to get it whether you like it or not. You're going to get yours. Maybe when we hear these things, maybe we were growing up with receiving something wasn't very um, joyful. 
it meant that maybe I was receiving something I may not have consented to. <laughs> and now this, I'm going down, like this is four examples. And I'm like, where's the good stuff? So that energy around receiving may be vibrating in our consciousness that maybe it's not so good to receive. <clears throat> it kind of creates a struggle within us that we have this desire and we want to receive, but yet there's that struggle within us that says, mm, I really can't receive it, or maybe I shouldn't, or maybe it's not good for me. Or if I do it, then what? So spirit was very funny and showed me this football analogy, and I said, are you sure this isn't for David Fuller? <laughs> <laughs> because I don't watch football. Um, but here it goes, so I might need your help. So we have a coach, right? We have the coach, we have the team. And then you have the quarterback, and doesn't the quarterback kind of run the team? I mean, doesn't he set the plays? So we have your quarterback, and he's like the intention. The quarterback has the intention to throw to a receiver. Okay, so he's throwing to the receiver. And then all the teammates are like the little affirmations going, yes, we can do this. Yes, we're going to win. Yes, 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 I'm good enough. I can do this. I can do this. And they're all working together to help the receiver get in the end zone to make the goal, right? Then we have the defensive line. And the defensive line could be some of our own limiting thoughts. Hmm. Um, and so they are butting up against our affirmations. So we're trying to move forward, and we're saying, yes, we can do this, but we still have these limiting thoughts that maybe receiving is not very that good. Maybe you're going to get hurt. Do you deserve this? And they're playing on the field, going back and forth. And they throw, and maybe the receiver catches it, but not in the end zone. So they get another chance, right? Okay, so they start over. And then they continue to have that interplay of, I can do it, no, you can't. I can do it, no, you can't. I'm going to stop you. And then sometimes doesn't, you're going out along just fine, and then some comes from the side and just clips you, and you go, where did that come from? I thought I had worked on that. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a flag on the field, and someone gets hurt. And then there's anxiety because stuff's happening, and what if this guy gets taken out of the game? Then he's not in front of me anymore, but I've been used to seeing this person, this belief in front of me as I'm trying to manifest. And now it's clear. Now what do I do? Might bring, huh? Catch the ball. <laughs> Catch the ball. <laughs> but might bring anxiety because now that's different. So we got our affirmations twisting and turning and jumping and trying to go past those limiting beliefs. And so the game continues. And then, have you ever noticed that when there's a tackle and a bunch of guys all in a pile, sometimes the um, opposing team holds his hand out and helps the guy get up? Why do you think that is? They know each other. They've been playing e against each other for years. They've probably been playing on the same team before. They're very familiar with each other. How many years do we have our limiting beliefs with us? Lifetimes. We are very familiar with them. They are part of us. And so isn't the game charged with emotion? It's pretty intense. It's pretty intense. And there may be a rookie or two. There might be a new limiting belief that you might have picked up along the way. Or it might just look different. So they know, the coach knows all the moves, don't they? The coach knows what the team is capable of. You keep saying, let's do, run this play. Because the coach can see from the sidelines. 
he knows a way to get through. He's seen all the tapes. Seen all the tapes. As long as we see life as a competition, the struggle and resistance will continue within us. For who created our limiting thoughts? We did. We didn't, if we didn't create them, we accepted them. And they're all part of us, not the totality of us, but just part of us. And why do we want to be fighting ourselves? Because we're very familiar with them. Um, so if we can learn to accept and not fight against, we can move into harmony. And how are we receiving most of our creations throughout the day? Because our affirmation, I'm creating now, this thought, I'm creating now, this word, I'm creating now, how are we receiving our creations throughout the day? Do we tend to block our good? <coughs> no, no, I don't need that. No, thank you, no. How are we good at receiving God's guidance or love? Isn't that the daily playbook for our life? Does, didn't, isn't that the original co-creation? We have our plan for our life, and we come down, and we pretend we forget, and then we can connect with God as our daily playbook of how am I navigating how can I receive my creation that I wanted to achieve while I was here? Sometimes we might have fear. Do we really want to know? What if God asks me to do something that I feel I can't do? It's going to look different than what the game I've been playing. Maybe it's just hard to be still because we're so busy, because we feel we have to be busy because we're not worthy just to be. Patrick once did a service that said, we are human beings, not human doings. <laughs> and being is what's important. Well, further down in the definition of receive, there's the good things, but it was like number seven. <laughs> Accepted, to accept mentally as authentic, valid, to have room for, to hold, to contain. Um, collected, acquired, honored. Honored and accepted. There's a law, giving and receiving. As you give, you will receive. The energy will return to you in like kind, in like measure. Consciously realize your intentions as you give, and you are telling the universe how you want to receive. It's the same energy. We spend all our time giving, giving, doing, 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 and if we don't stop to receive, we're missing it, and we're being not in balance because it's energy exchange. I have to exchange energy. What if we honored all our thoughts as a temporary part of us and not the totality, and we were in the flow and non-resistance so we can stop fighting ourselves? Maybe we should let some of those guys retire. <laughs> They're pretty beat up by now, don't you think? We've been working on them for lifetimes. We'll give them a roast. We'll thank them because it was a game of growth. And they were put there because we put them there. And they were put them there, we put them there for our growth. And now we can give them some love. And we can say, thank you. I once considered you as valid you almost had me fooled I was not worthy enough. But it's time to retire because I've grown to receive my higher purpose now. And they did a really good job. So 
So we can let those thoughts and beliefs retire. And what happens when the players retire? They move on. They're friends, aren't they? They become sportscasters. <laughs> and now they're above the game. And now they're in a new realm. We're like, we did this for a while. We butt heads. We, you know, did all our stuff, pretended not to like each other. But now, now we're calling the shots. Now we are above, and now we're looking at this field differently because we're not in the muck anymore. So how long do you want to play the same game? I thought that was fun. <laughs> now we're going to get serious. I thought this was a beautiful example in the Aquarian Gospel of honoring and accepting. Um, it's chapter 159 in the Aquarian Gospel. And, you know, Jesus received. Jesus received. Bar Simon was once a leper and was cleansed by Jesus by the sacred word. And they abode in Bethany. In honor of the Christian Lord, he gave a feast, and Lazarus was among the guests, and Ruth and Martha served. And as the guests reclined about the table, Mary took a curse of rich perfume and poured it out on Jesus' hands and feet. And then she knelt, and with her hair she wiped his feet. The odor of the rich perfume filled all of the room. Now Judas, always looking for the selfish side, exclaimed, for shame, why did you waste that costly perfume thus? We might have sold it for 300 pence and had the money to supply our wants and feed the poor. Now Judas was the treasurer and carried all the money of the Christine band. And others said, why, Mary, why you, what, what a profligate you are. You should not throw such wealth away. But Jesus said, you men, be still. Let her alone, you know not what you say. The poor are with you constantly, and at any time you can administer to them, but I will not be with you long. And Mary knows the sadness of the coming days. She has anointed me beforehand for my burial. The gospel of the Christ will everywhere be preached, and he who tells the story of the Christ will tell about this day. And what was done by Mary at this hour will be a sweet memorial to her wherever men abide. This is, he's already raised Lazarus from the dead. This is the last right before he gets arrested. Don't you think Jesus was pretty busy? <laughs> Don't you think he had a lot on his mind? Yet he allowed Mary, he stopped and allowed Mary to honor him. Who had been like Judas? What are you doing wasting that? We could use that to meet our needs. He didn't even see Jesus as um, worthy to receive that. Who had been Mary? Have you outpoured something lavish to honor someone something that you love as you pour your energy and was it received or was it discounted and who has been the Christ that would allow the honoring don't you think that this was for Mary's soul as well as Jesus soul Mary saw the bigger game. Judas saw our immediate needs. We got to be busy. We got to be feeding the poor. We got to be doing that. You can't be wasting that. Jesus had been telling them what was going to happen, and Mary knew. And don't you think the honoring of Jesus was validating, wow, somebody listened to me. Someone knows my path and knows what I'm going to be going through. And I'm going to receive because that's going to support my soul's journey. 
then here we are talking about it, just like Jesus said. So there's a bigger game that we can play that receiving is really receiving for our soul. It's what we put out and we want to receive because that's going to lift us to a new level of receptivity and giving. Because giving and receiving is all part of the same energy. If you don't receive, someone can't give. And then there's a block. Take a deep breath. Do you feel like you can receive? Do you feel like you're worthy to receive? Um, we just moved, and I was going through some files, and this paper flew out, out of a file, and it's God's promises. And God wants us to receive. We're here to receive. And so we're going to do something a little different. We're going to go into a little meditation, but I'm going to read these to you, and I want them to sink in as much as your defensive line will allow. <laughs> <laughs> and to feel the oneness of the energy. Okay, so let's just put our feet on the floor. And God, we ask that a column of your love and light come over this entire group. And I ask that a column of life, light come over each individual person. And I want you to feel that calm of light. And I ask that everybody's Christ of nature be fully present and quickened in their bodies, quickening in their heart. And just allow yourself to soften, to feel whatever you feel. You are good and perfect, a divine child of God. And these are going to be directives from your coach for your new play and your new day. And just allow them to sink in. I have come that they might have life and have it abundantly. Every good and perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variableness, no shadow of change. It is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Beloved, I pray above all things that you may prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. Whatever you wish men to do for you, do likewise also for them, for this is the law of the prophets. If you remain with me, and my words remain with you, whatever you ask shall be done for you. In this the Father will be glorified, that you bear abundant fruit and be my disciples. Therefore, I say to you, anything you pray for and ask, believe that you will receive it, and it will be done for you. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me shall do the works which I do, and even greater than these he shall do because I am going to my Father. And just breathe those in. God's promises are for you to receive. You're expected to receive. It's part of the flow of life. And just allow that energy to anchor in, in however it can. And just feel your expandedness and that peace. And if anything comes up contrary, send it, love. 
Thanks for helping. Just keep sending it love. And just take a nice deep breath. And when you're ready, just gently open your eyes. So how did you do? Did you feel more receptive? You feel that you're expected to receive? So go forth, receive the little things and receive the big things, and accept your creations. Yay, God. Yay God.